The only part I don't have to go through is the physical crucifixion. Even though I need to be crucified with Christ and die out to my own human nature and my own human will. But I don't actually have to hang on a cross. I don't actually have to have my back beaten like a plowed field. I don't actually have to have somebody beat me in the face to be a part of that. But I'm in Christ's stead as far as the responsibility to be God's mouthpiece. I, I, I don't know what that does to you. I don't know what that does to you. But that puts a weight on me that, it, that is impossible for me to carry. And so consequently, since I know I can't carry it, there's only one thing I can do. I have to go to Jesus, get in the yoke with him, and let him carry that as I simply am connected to him. Because I can't avoid the truth. I'm, I'm, I'm an ambassador of Christ. I'm in his stead with the ministry and the word of reconciliation. And, and, and I, I'm expected to do what he did all except the crucifixion part. You know, I love you. I don't love you like he does. I don't have the investment here he does. But I love you. I wouldn't be here if I didn't love you. The Lord's been good to me. After 41 years of pastoring, the Lord's been very good to me. I, I don't have all the money in the world. I don't really have very much money at all, but I got all I need. I'm very content. I have healthy children, healthy grandchildren. They're all living for God. I love my wife. She loves me. We have a, a nice place to live. We drive decent cars, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I, I, there really isn't anything I want. There's nothing I need. Now, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not rich. I just have contentment. Because none of this stuff matters. It's all temporary. But I have something else. I have an awareness that as a human being, as a person, that God himself wants to have a relationship with me that lets me speak. There's nothing to get. I'm not getting paid for preaching to you. You understand that? I paid my own expenses to get here. I didn't come here for an offering. And I'm not, I'm not doing this for your compliments. I was preaching in Pakistan the other day, or teaching in Pakistan the other day, and there were a few guys there. The, the great, great majority of those men are great. They're really wonderful Christians, great men of God. But there's a couple of guys that kind of got off a little bit and they ha unfortunately for them they have to be sitting there and I said yeah there's a couple of you here you preach for compliments and I'll tell you I said let me tell you what compliments are worth you go into a store you find something you like the guy quotes you a price you say well I don't have that but I got a hundred compliments here will you take that you can't spend compliments Compliments are no, they're not currency. There's only one reason to be here. Because the Lord told me to come. And gave me a message. And I hope it impacts you really greatly. You know why? Because I'm leaving. And then you'll have to give the credit to God and not to me. Because that's what he's looking to do. That's what he's wanting to do. That's what he's trying to do. And your very presence here tells me that's really what you're wanting. Now, 
I'm struggling with this a little bit tonight because your faith is not matching your desire tonight. I had a, the privilege, my wife and I, to share a meal with Brother Willoughby today. And, and we, we were talking, you know, we, we talked about 10,000 different things it seemed like. And uh, <laughs> one thing he said, and I've said the same thing, but he said it today. He said, you know, you really, he said, I spent 35, 38 years of my life surprised when God used me. It was, it was shocking to me that God would use me. He said, you know one thing I've learned? You really do have to begin to believe that God will use you. We're going to pray here in just a second. Listen to me carefully. Your desire is not matching your faith tonight. You've got a lot more desire than you've got faith to believe that he will use you. There's not anybody in this room tonight debating with me over what I'm saying. Your spirit's saying, amen, you believe it. You believe what I'm saying is true. You just don't see how it fits you because you just don't have the faith sitting here right this moment to say, he's talking to me. He wants to do this through me. Your desire is greater than your faith. I'm not, I'm not finding fault. I'm trying to help you understand something here. It's not enough to have desire. You've got to believe that he will do it. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them. The desire's in this place, but the faith isn't here right this moment. And, and, and there's 10,000 different reasons, even in this group, why your faith isn't working. Some of you have, have shame issues. Some of you have guilt issues. Some of you have got childhood issues. Some of you got... You know, you, you just look at yourself and, you know, you, you don't always pray consistently. Maybe you don't always read the Bible, blah, 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 blah. You know, there's 10,000 excuses that all belong under the blood. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe it, you receive them. I, I, I really have got to stop here because there's, there's no benefit, uh, not stop, I don't think, finish for the evening, but stop here right now because I don't believe it's important. If, if the stuff that's about to come, I know what's coming in these notes. The stuff that's about to come is really some heavy stuff. It's good stuff. It's powerful stuff. But it's heavy stuff. And, and, and if I share that with you right now, with your desire here, with your confidence that God can use you to do this, ah, I'm going to do more harm than good. For some of you, all I'm going to do is convince you that you're right. You're not good enough. God can't really mean this belongs to you. Yeah, I can see how this fits everybody else, but not me. In the name of Jesus. Father, Father, every hindrance to the faith of this people, individually, collectively, everything, every lie, every excuse that the adversary is using, to keep each person in this room from believing that you're talking to them and that you know them and you know all about them and you know what their problems are. But you're still, still speaking to them. You're still trying to help them. That you still want to use them. Help them, Father. I loose the spirit of faith in this place in the name of Jesus. Receive it. Receive it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 